going on detroit lions fans welcome back detroit done three and three with steve look i'm not going to beat around the bush you guys see the thumbnail you see the title you probably have a very good idea where this conversation is going to be heading try to have an open mind okay um <laughs> you guys see the thumbnail i can see the future i know what a lot of people are going to say clickbait desperate for content no 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 <laughs> not, not here it is football season we have content galore there's plenty of things i could be talking about in this and i will get to what sparked this idea into my head i understand it's going to be a conversation where a lot of people probably won't like this episode but that's okay i'm still here i'm still here i'm still standing on an idea that is why you come to youtube for entertainment you come to youtube for entertainment and information you guys can decide which one this will be but first and foremost i want to say that um to a tongue of viola man uh it, it's getting tough to watch these concussions every year um it, I don't cheer for injuries. I, I, I never have. I never will. The Miami Dolphins don't affect me in, in any way. They're not in my conference, my division, but I'm just a, a diehard football fan. And I love watching exciting teams. And the Miami Dolphins are an exciting team to watch. And um, that involves watching a lot of games and seeing Tua go through these concussions. I remember a couple of years ago, you guys are probably very, very familiar with what happened to him in Cincinnati where – he literally looked like he was, he was, he was like, I'm not joking. It looked like he was dead. Okay. Um, it, it was a scary sight. He came back uh, later in the year, but th these concussions are getting to be a problem. So I am not in a position to tell Tua uh, how to handle the rest of his career or, or what to do going forward. Um, Tua's got to do what's best for Tua. Uh, and end of story. Um, whatever that decision may be, if he wants to keep playing football, if the doctors say that that's a good thing to do, and I hope he takes that into consideration. Um, whatever his family's telling him, I hope I, I, at the very least, I hope and I pray that he's at least weighing his options. OK, um, I understand this guy's set for life financially. If he decides he doesn't need football, that's up to him. If he wants to keep playing, that's his choice, too. But I hope that maybe he takes a look at some some options to protect himself like these uh, these protective caps. Maybe I don't know. There's 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 options out there for two. And I hope that he chooses the right one. But let's get into some business talk now, because. When I woke up this morning, I checked Twitter, and the first thing I saw was a clip from Dan Orlovsky. And Dan Orlovsky is saying the, saying the same thing I did, man. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's saying the same thing I did about Tua's choices and, and all that, and I'm not going to go into his spiel. It's about a one-minute uh, clip on, on Twitter if you guys want to check it out. And um, Dan mentioned the same thing that I was thinking. He, he, he was talking about how the Miami Dolphins are in a tough spot and if they should reach out to another team and inquire about a trade. Um, the teams that he mentioned were the Kansas City Chiefs for Carson Wentz and the Jacksonville Jaguars for Mac Jones. I'm not sure either one of those options makes makes the Miami Dolphins any better than, than Skylar Thompson. And, and I was watching Skylar Thompson last night. Wasn't overly impressed. I mean, I get it. He's a backup. He's not supposed to light the world on fire. But Carson Wentz and Mac Jones, are, are they – big upgrades compared to that like is, is that really moving the needle I, I don't really personally think so uh, not from what i've seen in limited action from mac jones and carson wentz uh he's a backup for a reason this guy this guy was a potential mvp a few years ago until he hurt his knee and he kind of fell off the face of the earth in a, in a way from going from that high a uh, high of level of football to to where he is now is pretty pretty big drop off so when he said that that's where i got the idea that's where this whole episode comes from. So if you guys are going to call me clickbait and desperate for attention or whatever you guys want to say, make sure you go to Dan Orlovsky's page and say the same thing. Just because he has a bigger platform doesn't mean he has the best ideas. So I got to thinking, why wouldn't you call the Detroit Lions, who have a young mobile quarterback, cannon of an arm, um, a phenomenal athlete? And I'm not talking Jared Goff. I'm talking Hendon Hooker. Now, if I'm the Detroit Lions, I am not reaching out to Miami. I am not going to offer him up on a platter. What I am going to do is if I'm Brad Holmes, I'm going to make you call me. I'm going to make you put yourself out there. I'm not going to offer up Hendon Hooker and, and just uh, try to get a deal done. 
If you reach out to me, if you're the Miami Dolphins GM and I don't know his name, and you call me if I'm Brad Holmes, I'm asking for a king's ransom. I'm asking for everything. You want Hendon Hooker? First round pick. You wanna you wanna throw in a player? Maybe we could do a third round pick in a player. I'm not sure, guys. Um, at the end of the day, Miami is a good football team. All right, they ha- they are built in somewhat of a way, kind of like the Detroit Lions. Where it, and I mean that in a way where Miami has weapons. Okay, they have uh, Devon A. Shane, their running back, really like him, speedster. They have Tyreek Hill, one of the best wide receivers in the league. They have Jalen Waddle, one of the best um, route runner, nah, one of the best backup wide receivers, I guess we'll say, in the NFL. Like they have a good one two punch at wide receiver. Not really sure how to word that. Hopefully, you guys can help me out. I think that the Miami Dolphins have a great team. They have a good defense. They're, they're, they're built for success. They're ready to win. This Tua injury could cripple their season. If Tua decides, I'm done. I'm hanging him up. This is this was it for me. Uh, maybe he had a conversation with his family before, and, and he said, "Hey, if I get one more concussion, that's it. I'm done on the spot." I, I don't know. I'm just speculating here. This is all um, hypothetical. This this isn't. There's no facts behind this, but I have to imagine that these conversations probably have happened with his family. Um, again, I'm not offering up Hendon Hooker. I'm not Brad Holmes. I'm not calling Miami and saying, hey, this is this is an offer, Hendon Hooker for for whatever. Make Miami call us. All right. Now 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 let's ask yourself this. Is Hendon Hooker better than Carson Wentz and Mac Jones? I think so. Rookie contract, younger. Um actually might not be younger than Mac Jones. I'd have to look that up. I don't know. But I, I do think he's better than Mac Jones. I look at Hendon and I I see him on the Miami Dolphins team that's got a lot of speed with those guys that I just mentioned, Waddle, Tyreek Hill, and Devin Aching. You throw in Hendon Hooker, who's mobile, can extend plays, can run, I think he'd be a good fit with Miami. Now, I do not want to see Hendon Hooker leave Detroit. I am not asking for him to get out of town. I'm not uh, hating on Hendon Hooker. I've actually grown quite fond of Hendon Hooker this offseason. Okay? Um, he, he's proved to me that he can play in the NFL. And I said I wanted to see his game translate from college to the pros, and it it has, and I need to see a little bit more. And I'm not ready for him to be my starter, but my opinion about Hendon Hooker is he's a very, very solid backup. So I understand that the Detroit Lions want that contingency plan just in case something happens to Jared Goff. Um, And I don't want to be in the same boat as Miami where I'm having to make calls. I don't need to. If if something happens to Jared Goff, I could plug Hendon Hooker in there. Again, guys – this is all speculation. This is all hypothetical. This is all based on a lot of conversations and a lot of information that only a handful of people in the world have, and they probably live in Florida, and their last name is probably Tonga of Iowa. Okay? I don't know. It's speculation. Again, I just saw this clip from Dan Orlovsky. It got my wheels spinning. Um, I know what the comments are going to say, guys. I'm ready for it. Have a little fun on YouTube is my final request. All right. Leave some comments down below. Hit that like button. Stick around. Subscribe. Oh, and and one last thing. I texted Will and asked him if I should even do this. And he said, why wouldn't you? So I have Will's backing on this one. Appreciate the appreciate the love, my man. Enjoy that day at work. Hit that like button, guys. I'll be back later with another show.